Welcome back. Brought the FXR down today. Might have a person interested in the front end, so I'm going to leave the brakes and everything together. My goal was to drain the fluid and get everything off, but I have somebody that might be interested in the complete front end, so I don't necessarily want to take it all apart just yet. Today we're going to focus on getting the speedometer and um, tachometer off, get the fuel gauge off, get the rear pegs off and the side peg, the left side peg here, and then see what time I have left to work on the rest of the bike. You know, slowly but surely I want to get this thing apart and get it ready to sell. Listed a couple of parts that I took off yesterday on eBay. Uh, be doing the same thing with these as I get them off. So today we'll start at the top here and work our way down, figure out how much we can get done. So follow along. Again, I'm trying to disconnect everything and save all the wiring. I like to keep this as complete as possible. 
You know, a lot of times you'll see a lot of wiring cut. A lot of people will rush through this, get them taken apart as quick as possible, cut all the wires along the way. I like to keep all the connections together. That way they're ready to use. It's always amazing when these connections have been together for so long, they just don't want to come apart. that part done, let's get the headlight lens out.
Rubber's been on there a long time. It's pretty stuck. Seems to be zip ties everywhere. Not sure that's how they would have come from the factory or if that was a added thing that the previous owner did or how that works.
sure if these will squeeze out of the hole or not, if I'm going to have to go through and de-pin all these. I may have to get my tools out and de-pin all these, take pictures and try to get this done right, because I don't believe these connections are going to fit out through the hole. Yep, unfortunately I'm going to have to depin all these. So this is as far as I'm going to take that part today. I was hoping to get further on that, but unfortunately the right way to get this undone is to, to actually pull all the pins. So I'll have to get my tools to depin these properly so I can do it right. I do have a set of tool depinning tools, not here unfortunately. I'll take pictures of the of the sockets themselves so I can actually get the wiring back in the proper places. I don't want to have them off, I want to make sure they're actually right, that way I can get all of the, the wiring here undone. But unfortunately for today, that's as far as I'm going to take that because I don't want to risk screwing something off or breaking some, some of the wiring or messing any other parts up. So for now, I'm just going to put the wiring back in there. I'll set the trim rings on the workbench, and we'll move on to the next step. Haven't had enough coffee yet this morning, so my thought process is not all together yet, unfortunately. So I'm enjoying a little bit of coffee while I'm looking at the project here. Figured while I'm down there, I might as well get the left side peg off. And while I'm thinking about it, I'll try to remove the rear pegs, passenger pegs. I feel that I can fish enough extensions through from one side to the other to be able to get on the bolt on the other side. That's the hope at least. We're going to attempt that and see how that goes. on that side. See if we can do it on this side.
It's a pretty neat setup that I've never actually messed with before, but as you can see, it's keyweighed, so it holds it in place nice. Unfortunately, on this side, I can't get the bolt to break free, or the nut to break free just yet. So I'm gonna hit it with some penetrating oil, let it sit for a while, and try it again. Try not to lose that keyway. Let that set for a few minutes and hopefully that'll give me the answer I need. Next I'm going to move to the other side. I'm going to disconnect the fuel line. I'm going to drain the fuel out of the gas tank. It's not a lot in there, there's like a quarter of a tank left. So I want to get that out. Go. We'll let that drain, hopefully get most of the fuel out. Next, we're going to pull this dash apart.
that gets that out of the way. See about pulling this fuel sending unit. Sounds like our gas is almost drained. Let that trickle out the rest of the way. If I have time today, we'll pull this tank too. has been assembled. Tank is super clean inside. From what I can see, should get a light on and check out the rest of it. But I believe it's pretty rust free. A little bit in there, not bad. It definitely seemed way worse. But honestly, for a 1985, the tank looks really good. Even the paint on it's in pretty good shape. I know it's a repaint. Whoever did it did a pretty good job.
Next we'll focus on getting the seat off. Should be a pretty quick, easy removal, I believe. on the back seat. Now that this tank is drained, I believe we've got all the fuel out of it. I don't hear any really in there, maybe a little bit. Still some draining, not much.
Now if the tank is off, we'll shut the fuel off just in case there is a residual amount in there, which there probably is. Gotta get the crossover tube off. I don't think there's any hose clamps on that. There is not. Surprising. There's still a little bit of fuel in the front of this thing. catch it and we'll stand this thing up. The tank is free. There's a fair amount of gas in the back of this thing. We'll stand it up on our seat there for a little while. I'll drain it a little later. For now, I'm going to put the handlebar bolts, the top clamp, back in place. I do want to leave the bars on as long as I can because I would like to be able to wheel this on and off the lift if needed and it just makes it that much easier. One of these days I'll get all my nuts and bolts organized. I'll have everything set by size. I know I've got other handlebar riser parts, bolts, nuts, findings. I just don't have them available to me right now. And unfortunately, these ones are really long. I was hoping to be able to shorten it up just a little bit. Being as long as those are, I really expected to run out of thread before they actually tighten up. But it seems like they work pretty good. I'm going to attempt to get this off again. Hopefully it has sat long enough with penetrating oil on it and it will actually come loose now. So we'll give that a shot.
And there we are. Two passenger pegs have been removed. This is as far as I'm going to take the bike for today. I've got quite a few things on my list of to-dos and I don't have enough time to continue working on this. So for now, this is a good stopping point. I can still wheel the bike around the shop, which is good. It'll still stand on its own kickstand. It makes sense to you know, stop at this point for today. I do need to get my depinning tool so I can actually get all of these connectors depinned, taken apart, and able to be pulled back through the headlight housing. Then I can kind of get everything apart properly and then put it, you know, make sure all the connections are back together the way that they should be. I want to make sure that those things are sellable, that the next guy that gets them can plug them in and they just work. When I started taking this bike apart, or before I started taking this bike apart, everything worked. All the turn signals worked, the speedometer, tachometer worked, the fuel gauge worked, the brake light worked, a headlight worked. Um, I mean, everything just worked like it should. Oil light came on, high beam light worked, all that good stuff, neutral light, activated when you were in neutral, everything worked as it should. So knowing that, I want to be able to sell the parts like that as well. I want the next owner to be able to buy this, these pieces and, and know for a fact that they work. And that's why I want to be able to put the connectors back together the way that they were. I don't want to have any issues or sell somebody something and then they have to figure it out. I want to be able to sell it and then it's plug and play. They just plug it in and it works like it should. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Of course, if you like these videos, please you know, feel free to comment. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. I do plan on doing a lot of these. I tear a lot of bikes apart you know, from you know, as far back as the 1950s on up. Um, I haven't had anything that old that I want to part out yet. I do have quite a few old motorcycles in my, my barn that I hope to make videos of me putting them together, uh, assembling them and getting them road ready. And that's what I'm doing with the 48WL right now. That's the project that's on the bench over there, and that's the one I'm, I'm actually actively working on. But I do have a, a list of projects that I'd like to get to, and of course, if you guys like my videos and you like seeing different motorcycles coming together or coming apart, you know, subscribe to the channel, follow along, give it a like, you know, share with your friends. As always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.